Hi, Kevin here. Welcome to the Claremont Classic Garage. Uh, thanks for your patience. I know it's been a while since I made any new videos. We are having a big, big, big cleanup here around the farm. Um, I spent basically eight or nine weeks cleaning up a mess that took me 20 years to make. So that's not too bad. Uh, anyway, today we've got a little project. Uh, we're going to ease back into this gently. So uh, let's have a look at what we got to do today. Today we're going to be doing a little bit of work on the lawnmower. It's a Ferris IS-2000Z. Big block. That's the only reason I bought it, because it said big block. Um, it's got a, a 30 horse Briggs Vanguard in it. It's a 61 inch cut. It's a really, really nice machine. Um, it's due, actually a little bit overdue, for its 250 hour service which is nothing really more than checking a few things and replacing the filter for the hydrostatic drive we'll do that I've ordered the part we're gonna do a couple other little things to it um, the anti scalp wheel here is broken I've got some new ones and we're gonna be modifying this a little bit I'll explain that when we when we get to it I've got it jacked up here I was I was having a look at the blades they're okay I'm just gonna pull them off and sharpen them and put them back on it needs a new belt because that's why it ended up in here. The belt broke. So we've uh, secured a new belt. We're going to put that on it. And we'll get her all back and running and mow some grass. Here's our blades. You can see they're pretty, pretty used up. But, I mean, we're more than halfway through this season. It'll, it'll get a new set of blades for next year. So we're going to take them over to the bench grinder and put a little edge back on them. And... They'll be good to get us through the rest of this season. So we just run the blade back and forth on that bench grinder a little bit like so. Of course, safety glasses and hearing protection are a, are a good idea as long as probably a long sleeve shirt because the sparks will fly. Um, they don't come out perfect, but we're not mowing the greens at Augusta, you know what I mean? We're just banging around the farm here, keeping the grass under control. So these will finish out the season for us and we'll put a new set on next spring. But that's it, all three blades sharp, ready to put back on. All right, so the blades are back on and buttoned up, which is gonna have two benefits. Number one, it'll cut the grass a little nicer. Number two, when the blades are sharp, it, it puts far less stress on the engine to, to cut the grass and you, reap the benefit of increased fuel efficiency. So it, it's pretty good to keep your blade sharp. Now what we're gonna do is these anti-scalp wheels, this one the middle's busted out of it, and this one might be savable, but I bought two new ones. Uh, and it's something we're gonna modify. One problem with these Ferris lawnmowers, if you're going down a, a like a fence, um, we got a lot of cow fence around here, or even chain link, um, this bolt, grabs the fence and makes a big mess and sometimes the fence even gets stuck in there that's bad uh, Ferris did address this by changing these on later ones to a carriage bolt so we're gonna do that but what else we're gonna do is we're gonna use this piece of metal and we're gonna make a little nerf bar it's gonna bolt on there and kinda curve around so that if we're going along the fence it'll it'll deflect the fence around hopefully so that's what we're going to do now. Got our little Nerf bar uh, pretty much ready to go here. It needs one more coat of yellow paint on this side and then let it dry. So while we're working on that in between, I'm going to go ahead and start servicing up the chassis on this thing. There's a lot of, a lot of grease fittings, lots of little points you can put a dark drop of oil on. Uh, we're going to check the tire pressures. We'll get all that done um, while we're working away. This chain... Um, I got to do something with this. I don't like it. This is <laughs> this thing. You got to be careful with it. You get too close to anywhere mucky. It gets stuck really easily. So um, I put this chain on it so it'd be easier to pull it out when it gets stuck. But it looks terrible. So I'm gonna come up with a better way to mount that. And uh, carry on with our with our service and maintenance. 
So that worked out pretty well. I'm hoping this will uh, prevent this thing from catching the fence anymore. I painted it yellow too so I don't trip over it. Hopefully I'll see it. Got our new anti-scalp wheels installed. I oiled up all the other ones. Next thing we're going to do, a little repair. Deb is going to uh, drill some holes in this and stitch it back together with some tie wraps. It's, it's more of a, a looks thing than anything else, but still it looks like hell like that. So we'll let her fix it up. I check, you can, you can still buy this big flat, but it's like $100. So we might as well try and fix this one for now. That's all fixed up. So now what we're going to do, I've got the deck lifted. I'm going to lower the deck all the way. And we're going to go and grease all the bearings and pulleys and stuff under there. And then we'll put the new belt on. So the deck is all greased up. We've got the new belt installed. You'll see that one idler pulley is gold as opposed to the rest of the pulleys that are black. Uh, there's three idler pulleys on this thing. One of them, the bearing went, so I replaced that. And now I notice with the belt off, the other two are getting just a tiny bit noisy. So probably in the spring, I'll replace the other two before I put it into service for 2021. But for now, it's okay. Next thing we're going to do is go around here in the chassis and grease all the grease points. And I always, always, always follow the manual because this thing has got so many grease fittings hidden all over the place. If you don't follow the book, you miss half of them. Um, here's the, the, the two pumps. The wheel motors are, are down in each wheel. It's quite a fascinating machine. But anyway, we'll get her lubed up and uh, she'll be ready to go back to work. Well, until I change that. There's the filter I'm waiting on. I ordered it. It's the hydraulic filter, so we'll we'll change that, put new hydraulic oil in it. But um, the filter's not here yet. She's all greased up. Now we're gonna have a look at the air filter. This has a dual filter. It has a primary and a secondary. Here's the primary. Usually just pull this out and give it a good blow. There's a secondary in there. It's literally good for the life of the machine. This is the filter that, that you uh, you change or, or service. We're going to get just a fast blow and put it back in. Okay, so the air filter is back in. It, it was pretty clean. Not much came out of it. Um, the engine oil and filter, we're at, we're at our 250-hour service. The engine oil and filter isn't due till the 300-hour service. So... We've got a little ways to go before we get to that. Um, I could show you now a few of the things, modifications and stuff that I've done to this machine since I've owned it. Uh, let me put the seat down here. There we go. So first thing I do on any piece of equipment I have, I always install a battery disconnect because I park these things in wooden buildings with all kinds of other machines and you never know what's going to go wrong and you just don't want live batteries. One little electrical problem, one mouse chewing a wire and you're going to end up having a very bad day. Um, what else did we do? I added some LED lights to it. They're, they're the back ones. and. I put on the front. Originally when I first bought this, there was a kit that you could get right from Ferris that put two little lights in here. They were halogens. Uh, they were just driving lights for a car. Um, I found them to be really kind of inadequate and the bulbs were burning out all the time. So you know what? I put this bad boy on it, a 14 inch light bar, and it makes it into daytime. It's, it's really good, and it doesn't use a lot, of, a lot of juice. This I showed you already. That's my pull chain for when she gets stuck. I also added this little, this little grabber handle so I can pick up dog toys and stuff when I'm out there mowing. I put a bracket on it for a slow-moving vehicle sign just in case I'm ever down in the ditch with it, but haven't been yet. That there is a factory... Ferris accessory, just a little toe, toe hitch for the back. I pull my lawn sweeper with it, or when I get it stuck, sometimes I have to pull from the back to get it out. Um, 
I also added this re uh, receiver dock for an XM radio. The antenna's up there on top of the roll bar so I can listen to XM radio when I'm out mowing the grass. Um, another thing I did to it, which was just because I'm cheap, uh, this thing, you can see way down in there, you can just see it with the two hoses on it, that's the fuel pump. Um, unlike most Briggs engines that have a pulse fuel pump, this one had a mechanical one driven off the camshaft and it crapped out. So I put on this little electric one and it's been the bee's knees for many years. We've gotten most of the work done on the Ferris Zero Turn Mower. We were just waiting for the um, the suction filter for the hydraulic system to arrive in the mail so we could go ahead and change that and, and put some new oil in it. Um, in the meantime, since it's been sitting for a couple of days, I came out and found the left front tire flat. So we're going to pull it off and get the water bucket out and see if we can find where she's leaking. I got a sneaky suspicion that... Um, a long time ago, the sidewall got punctured, and I, I put a plug in it. Not really what you're supposed to do on a sidewall, but it's not like I'm driving this on the highway. It held for years, so maybe that's what's leaking now. It might have to put a tube in it. Or maybe we've got uh, a new puncture somewhere else. We're going to pull it off, and we'll find out. This is a great thing to have. Um, this is an actual uh, purpose made for checking tires for leak but you can pretty much make one yourself you can even make it out of wood even if it leaks a little bit so long as it'll hold the water for 10 minutes you can you could check a tire for a leak um i've got this thing off i got it cleaned up a bit so it could be leaking around the valve stem it could be leaking through the valve core they will often start leaking around the bead when they get old There could be a crack somewhere, although I don't doesn't seem to be too cracked. Oh yeah, look at that right there. Look at that slice in this. It's hit something. Could be leaking there. Anyway, we'll get it in the water and find out. So I'll put it down in first with the valve up, and then I'll flip it over and put it down in with the valve down, and we'll see what we get. Well, it doesn't quite get halfway in, so we might have to... Uh, flip it over. Okay, let's look at the other side. Now we'll just spin it around on this side. Okay. Down the water. Still don't really see anything. Still don't see anything. Still nothing. Okay, let's look at the other side. Okay, so there's nothing coming out our old repair. Still nothing. Still nothing. Isn't that bizarre? Not a single bubble. Well, so much for that. I'm just going to go ahead and put it back on <laughs> with the condition that if I find it flat again, ever, I'm just going to go right ahead and put a tube in it. And that should nip this in the bud. Okay, so we're going to go ahead now and change the hydraulic filter. We got our new one, Genuine Briggs & Stratton, who incidentally owns Ferris now. Even though they filed for bankruptcy protection. So here's our new filter. So what we have to do now is figure out how to change this filter without making a gigantic mess. Because taking the filter off is going to gravity drain the entire hydraulic reservoir. So probably what I'm going to do is try and get a small drain bucket underneath the machine and put some kind of a metal chute to catch as much of the oil as I can and direct it into the drain bucket and that should catch most of it. I might jack it up and put the back of it on stands 
So I've got a little more room under there. And then I'll maybe just poke a hole in the filter and let it drain slowly. So you might be able to see down in there, I've jerry-rigged uh, um, an old kind of a catch pan. It's an old serving tray, I guess. To It goes slopes on an angle to the back, and that'll direct the oil, hopefully, down into our drain bucket. Um, with that, I think I might be able to just kind of loosen the filter and let it run out slowly rather than try to punch a hole in the side of it and have oil go who knows where. If I loosen it with any luck, the oil will just kind of run down the filter and drip into the, into the catch pan. Only time will tell. Well, my plan seems to be working. You can see the oil running down the filter. It's dripping into the pan and then it comes out down there into the drain bucket. I love when a plan comes together. So I'll let that sit for a bit and make sure it's right empty. And then we'll uh, go ahead and change the filter and fill up the new oil. I've already made sure that the um, old gasket is gone from the filter base. And we're going to do the usual and put a little oil on this before we screw it on. I can even actually pre-charge this filter with a little bit of oil. So I may do that. Um, another thing, if you guys are owning older Ferrises, what I found out, I, I looked at my, my Ferris part manual, and this is exactly what I got for the part number. 1719168. Now, I plugged this into Amazon, all the usual places, and I was getting crazy prices. They were crossing up to different filters um, that were not OE, and, when I, and they were $40 and $50. When I started doing research, I started finding out that they were the same physically, they'd screw on, but I found one that was 22 microns, I found one that was 25 microns. Um, only the Briggs & Stratton Genuine OE is 10 microns, exactly like what I took off of this machine. And what I found out, the way I, I found it, this filter was superseded. The new number is exactly the same, 1719168, but it has YP on the end. Even though it doesn't show up on this, um, I think if we look at the box, we will see the, the, the superseded number. Let's see. Yeah, see that? It's got YP on the end of it. Now, once I figured that out, I went on Amazon again, and I found it in Prime for 18 bucks, shipping included. So that was much better. And it saved me a two-hour trip down to the city to get one from the dealer. So we're going to go ahead and fill this up with oil, lube up the seal, and put it on. So the oil we're going to use for this is Castrol Edge Full Synthetic 5W50. In the manual, it says you can use Castrol 5W50 synthetic or Mobile One 15W50 synthetic. And they do not tell you what they factory fill it with. Probably whatever they get a deal on that week. So um, they don't seem to be worried if the two of them get mixed. So what I'm going to do, because we live in Canada, and occasionally I do start this thing up and actually use it when it's pretty cool outside, I'm going to go with the 5W50. And that should suit our needs. That's why I chose that. Okay, our filter is pre-filled. And the seal is pre-lubed. We're going to screw it on, tighten it up. Usual rule, once it contacts, another three quarters of a turn. And then we're going to lower the machine down. And we'll fill up the reservoir. Then we'll start it up, kind of cycle the levers through a little bit. Try and get the air out of it. The manual says it'll, it'll act a little strange until all the air is out of it. And then um, it should be good to go. This is going really well, so I've gone ahead and decided what I'm going to do now is I'm going to crack the hydraulic lines down here at the, at the wheel motors and see if I could drain a little bit more of this old oil out of this thing. And let's get as much new stuff in it as we can, eh? Um, what I got to do first, I got to get the air and blow all this chaff away from here. We don't want to contaminate our hydraulic system in any way. 
But it is always nice to try and get this get this stuff changed out, get as much of it out as you can. So we're going to go ahead and do that, and let's see how it works. Well, it seems like it was a good idea. I got quite a bit of oil out of the wheel motors. Um, oh, look, there's a rock stuck in there. And you always got to keep your eyes open. How the hell am I supposed to get that out? There we go. Put it back out there where it belongs. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead, put the wheels back on, drop it on the ground. We'll do our preliminary fill on the hydraulic tank, then start it up and try and get the air blood out of it. Um, and then we can get back to mowing. Love mowing. Okay, I've put about two liters of oil in it. And that has got the reservoir filled up to the full hot mark. Leaves a little space in the top for air to gurgle and bubble away once we start it up and operate the joysticks a little bit. And then we'll um, shut it down and see where the level is settled down to. Okay, I started it up, worked the controls a little bit, back it out into the yard and back. Let's see what the level is settled down to. You know what? Not bad. It's still cold and it's just below the full hot level. So I'm going to go and cut the grass with it and then I'll check it again when it's hot and see if it's right up to this full hot mark and we should be good to go. So we're all done. I took it out, cut the grass. It performed flawlessly. All the stuff we did to it, it makes this thing work just like new again. So when I came back, I checked this fluid level hot, and yes, it needed a tiny bit of top up. So in the end, it basically took exactly two liters of oil to get her filled back up. And that's that. I can put it back to weekly work now. And next up will be its 300 hour service. Anyway, um, thanks for watching. I always like uh, you guys to tune in and see what we're up to at the Claremont Classic Garage. As usual, you know, down there, there's a lot of things you can do. You can comment, you can like, you can share. And also, you can hit the subscribe button and subscribe to our channel. So, you always get to see our latest videos. And that's it for now. Thanks and so long.